But it's important to not just wrap super tight immediately because it will definitely throw you off. And that's the problem we get when people do all their warm-ups with knee sleeves and then they put their knee wraps on for their top sets. They haven't actually been able to adjust to the different movement and the different feeling and it throws them off. And that's where you see people really fucking themselves up and uh, being unsuccessful in their sets. Strong as fuck. Strong as fuck. Oh. Yeah. Hey guys, and welcome back to your favorite channel on YouTube, Cold Strength. Now today, we have a squat tutorial, low bar squat, competition squat, wrap squat, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to show you how to get it done. We're going to go through each set, and we're going to explain something new, whether it's setup, bracing, equipment, foot positioning, hand positioning, etc. You name it. If you want to learn to squat, this is the video for you. I have squatted 415 kilos in competition, which is over 900 pounds. I've squatted over 400 kilos a handful of times. So I do know something about squatting. Now my current goal is to get myself back to 400 kilograms. You know, it has been a little while since I've really taken the three lift powerlifting seriously, but my next comp has been selected. So it's time for me to get back to work because obviously 415 is my PB. I have to beat that. And my goal for next year is to destroy that, okay? We want to beat that 1,050 kilogram total, we've got to get a big squat. So we're going to start with it today. I'm going to chuck the wraps back on for the first time in a long time. That's been fucking a long time since I've really actually done low bar squats. So bear with me if I'm a little bit rusty, but I'm going to give it my best shot. And uh, we'll get started now and we'll talk through it, but it's going to be a good session. I'm hoping to work up to around 300 kilos. That would be a nice little starting point, wouldn't it? Let's go, baby. All right, guys, so we're going to start this squat tutorial. Now, each set that I work up, I'll keep talking through different points. I'm not just going to talk about the entire squat and then start squatting. I'll break it down for you each set and kind of give you some examples. And I'll, um, I'll get some camera angles where you can see what's actually happening. Now, the goal for today, I haven't really done any proper squats in a while. I haven't done any wrap squats since my last competition about four or five months ago. So I'm going to put some wraps on today and we'll just work up to a single. Uh, you know, my next three lift meet uh, is about, well, it's in March, so we've got about three and a half months. So it's time to start squatting again. We'll work up a plate at a time, and as I said, we'll break it down each, each set. And uh, yeah, but we start with, you know, high bar versus low bar. What's the difference here? I mean, bar position is the main difference. Um, they do produce different results as well. Now, a high bar, high bar squat typically uh, is more quadricep dominant, where a low bar squat is more posterior chain dominant. What would be stronger? Well, for 99% of people, a posterior chain is stronger. So a low bar squat, if you're a power lifter in competition, is probably your sure bet for a bigger squat. Now, when we train high bar squats, because I'm a low bar squatter, all my power lifters are low bar squatters, we still train high bar squats, but we don't use a typical high bar technique. If you watch Olympic lifters, like weight lifters, when they do high bar squats, a lot of knees forward, um, which is very applicable for them and what they do. When they catch the barbell in, you know, when they're doing a clean and jerk or a snatch, you know, their, their knees are over their toes, very much so, right? So it's specific to them. When we train a high bar squat, we're trying to replicate a low bar squat because we're doing a high bar squat in order to make our low bar squat stronger. So we need to use similar cues and a similar technique. So as I said, the main difference is bar position. For the purpose of today, I'm gonna to do low bar squats, but if you're a high bar squatter, simply apply the same cues, you'll get the same idea, okay? Enough talking, we'll start 65 kilos, a low bar squat, and uh, yeah, hey Em, can you run the mono for me, please? I'm just gonna do five reps. We're gonna start with five repetitions. Now, we'll start with hand positioning on the barbell. Some people ask how close should you have your hands? That depends on your mobility. As close as your mobility will allow. Now I'm a pretty big guy, so I go a little wider, okay? And uh, this is a cambered bar, so it's not straight. I didn't bend it myself. Uh, this is just a more suitable bar for me at the moment, uh, as it takes away the stress out of my elbows and shoulders. We're getting the same result we would with a normal bar. But I'm gonna start with my hands a little bit wider in each set. I'm gonna bring them a little bit closer as I get towards my top set 
to achieve more tightness and stability, but I'll explain that as we go. Okay, so hands as close as mobility will allow for now, which is about here for me, five squats. As I get underneath the bar, I'm really squeezing my shoulder blades together, squeezing them together to make a nice rigid strong upper back. I take a breath, unwrap, I squeeze everything. So, as you kind of see there, pretty easy, 65 kilos, sorry, it's 25 kilo bar. Um, five reps, you know, I'm trying to apply the same speed on the way down that I will in my top set. I'm not gonna be going into the hole heaps fast here and then slowing down for my top set. I'm trying to make every warm up as close to identical as my top sets as I can. That's my goal. I'm gonna load another plate on the bar and we'll touch on a different subject. All right guys, second set, 105 kilos on the bar. Now we're gonna talk about foot placement, okay? Now, I think an issue I see with a lot of people when they squat is they have too wide of a stance uh, in relativity to the hip mobility or their mobility in general. And this usually makes them struggle with depth or they're in an extremely weak position when they're in the hole, okay? Because they're struggling to maintain external rotation from the hip, which is imperative in, you know, the correct squatting technique. If our, if our posterior chain is not working, I guess we put ourselves at greater risk of injury and we're obviously not gonna be as strong, okay? So if we're not generating external force here, we're gonna have internal rotation. Internal rotation here through the knees and the hips essentially means that your hips and your glutes aren't really doing their job any longer. So it's the quads and the lower back that generally take the brunt of that. And that's where you see a lot of injuries happen. Now I'm not saying that you're not gonna have any, any knee travel inwards, that's completely normal because these muscle groups under hip, muscle groups, sorry, in here are gonna be doing their job, okay? And, and, and they're working very hard as well. But our job is to essentially minimize the internal rotation we get where our valgus knee, some people call it, where we're squatting and our knees come in here like this when we come out of the hole, okay? We wanna try our best to maintain external rotation. The best way for that is also to start with the correct foot position. For me, shoulder width. No wider than shoulder width for most people. Some people arguably closer to hip width, but that's, again, probably too narrow for some people. But I think, you know, shoulder width in general for 90% of people is spot on. Another, uh, another, Another one in? All right, cool. We're gonna go just four reps here. Again, I'm gonna bring my hands slightly closer than they were last set, just inching them in each set. Let's go. Four reps. Yeah. That shoulder width with the feet. Um, so, that felt good. We'll move on to three plates now. And uh, we'll put a belt on and I'm gonna talk about how to use a belt for the next one. But, you know, be aware of your foot position when you squat. Setting up is very important, which is why each set will further go into the setup and execution. Let's go. Okay guys, 145 kilos on the bar, three plates. Now the reason I'm filming from this angle might not be really good for me to talk to you from right here, but I want you to see what happens when you put a belt on and brace, okay? What you're gonna see is my abs pushing out over the top of my belt, making me look nice and fat, okay? We're trying to push out, not trying to suck in the brace. We wanna expand our obliques and expand our abs into the belt, okay? So when we take our big breath, we push in to the belt, we pull our rib cage downwards towards our pelvis, and we just fucking squeeze, okay? We squeeze everything out and brace our rib cage down. All right, now I like to put a belt on on the, on the third set because if you start going heavy, then you chuck a belt on, it feels really different. When I get to my top sets, 
you know, I want to be feeling good. I want everything to feel comfortable. And you don't get bonus points for not wearing a belt. Not wearing a belt doesn't make you stronger. It makes you stronger without a belt, but when you use a belt, you can use your abs more effectively, therefore you're stronger. We'll get three reps in. Let's go. So pay attention to my stomach pushing out over the belt as I brace. And even if you can, see we, if my rib cage, you can see how I draw myself down towards my pelvis before I squat. Hands are slightly closer again. Getting that bar slightly lower down my back. Push. Three reps. Easy peasy. We'll chuck another plate on. We'll chat soon. All right guys, so 185 kilos on the bar and it's time for me to put some knee wraps on now. It's been quite a while since I wore them and it does take a few weeks to adjust and get used to them. They're actually quite an uncomfortable experience, uh, especially in the first few weeks of using them, whether you've used them before or not. It just takes a bit of time to condition again. Um, so I'm gonna do this now. Now keep in mind, I still have a few sets to go. So I'm not trying to get you know, maximal assistance out of this knee wrap. This is to get the feel for it and I'll increase the tightness each set. It's important to not just wrap super tight immediately because it will definitely throw you off. And that's the problem we get when people do all their warm ups with knee sleeves and then they put their knee wraps on for their top sets. They haven't actually been able to adjust to the different movement and the different feeling and it throws them off. And that's where you see people really fucking themselves up and uh, being unsuccessful in their sets. We want to be primed and ready to go for set one, you know, for our first working set. We don't want to go through two or three working sets just to get used to the wrap before the session is over and you haven't really achieved anything. So I'll do this now, keeping in mind, I'll probably do maybe five revolutions, uh, but I'll show an example of each wrap as I go up so you can see how it kind of changes. Um, or maybe just my top set and I'll talk you through that wrap um, specifically because that'll be the tightest wrap I do today and I'll show you how to get it done. There's many ways to do it, many ways to skin a cat but this is the best way. It's simple, it's effective, and you know, this has helped me squat over 400 kilos multiple times. Um, and you know, some of the biggest squatters in the world use this wrapping technique, and it's not fancy, it's just simple, and it just works. All right, so we start here. We got to wrap from in to out, okay? Now I like to start just below the patella, okay? So we, we line the wrap up here, just below the knee, so it's kind of halfway. So the patella, the patella is here, so it's starting there and it goes down to about there. So we're just covering it nicely, locking it in. Okay, so it's just over the bottom of the kneecap. As you can see, we don't want to go too low on the calf. Wrapping in to out, we're going to go three up. So there's three vertical wraps up, okay? Pulling tension all the way around the wrap. We don't want to just pull tight in one direction. So we're going to go down on a diagonal now, down one. And typically we'll do more revolutions than this, but you know, it's a light wrap, so we're only going to get five. So on the fifth one, I hold it with that hand, I let it go, simply grab underneath, and you keep a little gap here, right? Easy to tie it off. So then all I have to do is push it under, pull it through, easy. Uh, we won't worry about filming the next one, but we'll, uh, we'll film the next set wrap so you can see the difference. All right, gang, so knee wraps are on, belt goes on, and wrist wraps go on now as well. It's time to start, you know, Getting ready, we're starting to work towards our top set. 185 kilos on the bar. It's not heavy for me, but we've got to start getting our mind in the game now. And you've got to train how you play, baby. And how do we play? We play to win. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, that's fucking right. Uh, one rep, singles from now in. Just one rep now, guys. Focusing on intent, on technique, making it perfect, okay? Focusing on the descent speed, being consistent, and staying nice and tight. Hands come in slightly closer again. It's time to really get tight in the upper back. Get it lower down the back, and it's not meant to be comfortable. One rep. Easy peasy, we'll chuck another plate on, wrap a little tighter next set. And keeping in mind, it's been a long time since I've done this. 
especially with wraps on, so it doesn't feel fucking amazing, but it will soon. All right, gang, got 225 kilos on the bar. I'm gonna wrap my knees again. I'll show you my, my first wrap again. This will be six revolutions, so one revolution tighter. Let's go. Pay attention to the starting position here. Wrapping in to out still, obviously. Pulling tension all the way around. Three up. A bit tighter this time, yeah? So you gotta make sure we're pulling slightly tighter so we have enough wrap, le wrap left over for the six revolutions, okay? So there's the double cross. And with the sixth one, we're gonna go back around the top. Hand underneath, pull through. Nice and simple, baby. All right, baby. Five sexy plates, 225 kilos, 495 pounds. Exactly, I think. Equipment goes on. Now this set, bracing becomes really important. It's time to switch on, so I'm squeezing my upper back together as hard as I can. Squeezing that barbell down into my back. Bracing my rib cage down as hard as I can. Pushing into that belt as hard as I can. And then descending whilst maintaining all that tightness. We don't want to let go of it. We need external rotation from the ground, our big toes stick into the floor, and we open the floor, we drive outwards. Tension through the whole body. Ready? One rep. Nice and easy, baby. Nice and tight now. Yeah, buddy. We'll move up to uh, 265 next. Wrap a little bit tighter, and we'll uh, try and maintain that technique. Double chat soon. All right, 265 on the bar. This probably be my last warm up. Maybe top set. We'll see how it moves. We crank those wraps to seven revolutions, to one revolution tighter. And now it's just about fucking implementing everything I've spoken about and putting it into one. You know, getting the bar in the right position on the back, the hands, you know, in the right spot so we can achieve that tightness. Our feet are in the right position, our bracing is correct, and our intention is fucking there. Straight down, straight up, baby, let's go. Let's go, baby. Easy peasy. We'll make one more jump. That was all right, let's go. All right, baby, 300 kilos in the bar, top set. I ain't gonna be talking now, it's just fucking focus. This is uh, a good opportunity to see my start point for this prep. 300 kilos would be a very good start point considering I haven't been doing low bar squats. Let's go.
Switch on your fucking cunt. Let's go. Easy fucking work. Big brace. Strong as fuck. Strong as fuck. Go, come on! Whoosh, whoosh. Ah. Whoosh. Whoosh. Oh. That was really fucking easy. 300 kilos, definitely 15, 20 kilos in the tank. You know, I think we got 400 kilos at next comp. And then we're fucking back in the game, baby. Let's go. All right, guys, there is the top set. 300 kilos, definitely moved really well, considering it's been a long time since I put wraps on and done low bar squats. That's a very successful day. There's definitely kilos in the tank, which is what we're looking for. And I can build on that, you know, weekly. I only had to have, have, have to add, sorry, 10 to 15 kilograms a session. And before you know it, we're back at 400 kilos. So that's happy, that's, that makes me very happy. But now, it's time to get back to the back down work. Just two sets, put the sleeves back on, get some repetitions in. I'm gonna put 225 on the bar. Uh, so pretty conservative, but you know what I mean? Like doing five reps or so, that's tough enough. That's challenging because as I said, I only have to add 10 kilos a week. I don't have to go too hard too soon. We're gonna leave a little bit of room in the tank because we do need to focus on technique as well. And if we're working too hard, it's very difficult to implement good technique. So two sets now, back downs, and we're gonna just but I guess we're gonna just double down on what we just learned, going over the bracing, the foot position, the hand positioning, everything. This is our opportunity to perfect it. Okay, the, the heavy, heavy sets, we, have, we think a little bit less about technique, more about intention, but as we drop the weight back down again for accessories, now it's all on technique, okay? I don't have to psych up for this, it's just focus, 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 perfection, we're chasing it. Let's go. And that is the squats done, guys. 300 kilo top single and wraps, 225 for two by five and sleeves nice and easy. Easing back into it again, easing back into low bar squats and wraps as I'm roughly, I think it's like 14 weeks out of competition. So plenty of time to uh, obviously improve on that. And as I said, I don't have to add that much each session. It could be 15 kilos a fortnight every two sessions. And that's gonna have me in the ballpark of 400 kilos by in the prep. So, you know, it's nice to know that there isn't anything drastic that I have to do ahead of me. It's just now following the plan, being consistent, improving my technique and getting comfortable in wraps again. Now, um, you know, the first session in wraps is definitely very uncomfortable. It is what it is. My knees at the moment are a nice shade of red. Can you see that? I mean, that's just an honest day's work in knee wraps. It gets worse than that, man. That's only um, you know, one top set in wraps get multiple working sets in it gets worse but also you get used to it and doesn't become a problem anymore you actually don't really feel it at a competition you know once your mind's in the game it's like it's just there it doesn't bother you so if this is you and you know you've done a week in wraps and you didn't like it you've got to do it for at least four to six weeks and practice it's a skill it's a skill guys it's like anything it changes how you squat changes how it feels so you can't expect to just chuck them on and magically know how to use them properly 
that's not really how it works. But I do hope that it helped, you know. I'll touch on a couple more things. So, you know, if you want to wear lifting shoes or a raised heel, that's fine. I think, you know, to be optimal, we want to avoid that. But if you have mobility issues, well then you do what you must do. But if you can squat and flat, that's the way to go. And remember, you don't get bonus points for not wearing equipment. So if you don't want to chuck wraps on, that's cool. But if you're competing against people on wraps, you're going to give you know them the upper hand. There's no point doing that. It's competition, baby. It is what it is. Again, if you have any questions, if you're not sure of anything, drop a comment. I'm happy to help. I do offer online coaching, in-person coaching. If you want to take your lifting to the next level, I got you covered. And uh, I guess, is there anything else I need to cover? Not really. Go and buy my merch. We're nearly sold out, though. I think... Uh, we're about to sell out of the shirts and the bags, but I might do a restock because they have been very popular and I appreciate your support. And the ebooks have been flying, of course. So um, I hope you guys are enjoying those. But I'm gonna do some other accessory work now just for my, my abs and my lower back. I'm not gonna film that shit. It's a little bit boring, but I'm gonna get the work done. But you know what to do. Until next time, go to coltstrength.com and then go to the gym. <laughs>